that it actually exists, look, Salvation Treats, the 13th Gaunt book, hope that's in shot, with real words on the inside, isn't that exciting? Uh, Salvation's Reach, which is out just about now, will be out certainly in time for Games Day, which I hope to see many of you at. Um, uh, it's, the, it's the direct sequel to Blood Pact, it's the second book in the fourth arc of the Gaunt series, so it's technically the 13th Gaunt book, I can't believe that myself. Um, it's, uh, it's, it's the Gaunt, Gaunt's goes back in the field on a, on a, on a very, very crucial mission. Uh, everyone's involved, so there's enormous amounts of character interaction and shocking major turns and, and, and drastic character revelations and all sorts of big, big, big things. There are, I think if you read it, I think if you're a Gaunt, Gaunt fan, I think if you enjoy military science fiction you should enjoy it, but if you're a Gaunt fan you will love some of the things you discover in this book and the way certain characters develop and, 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 uh, and interact. And you'll by the end be going, gosh, I can see major themes that are developing for the two books left in this part of the story. Uh, the one thing I can guarantee you, pretty much, is that you won't necessarily notice two or three of the major themes that I'm developing in this book for use in the next couple of books. Uh, they're there, and in hindsight, they will, people will go, oh my goodness, that was staring me in the face, but you, I defy you. Um, I will even organise, if somebody comes up to me at a convention in the next year or so, at a games day or something, and whispers in my ear and say, am I right in thinking that that was just... And if they get it right, I will organise some kind of prize. But it will have to be done very stealthily so we don't give the game away. Uh, as Alex asks, did Major Baskerville have a nickname for Colonel Wilder? If he did, what might it have been? I don't know. I imagine we will find that out for reasons that become apparent in Salvation's Reach. Uh, so uh, I'll make a note of that in my just out camera shot little black book. And uh, we'll, we'll do something about that maybe. As Alex asks, have you ever considered writing more books that centre around chaos, expanding on the themes in Traitor General of Blood Pact? I have thought about that a lot. I think um, uh, focusing more on the on the on the activities of the chaos characters, the Blood Pact in particular, or the Sons of Seth, and also talking about um, what life is like on a uh, an occupied world, which we glimpsed in Traitor General, will be very very interesting indeed. I can't talk about that very much yet, but there is something coming along that I think will. Uh, relate to those things directly and probably the next time I get to do a, a, a vlog like this it'll be something uh, I can talk about then so uh, a tentative yes. Another question from Zalax any thoughts on another Sabbat World Anthology she asks Sabbat World Anthology which is incidentally just out now in uh, in, in paperback uh, was last year's Gaunt book to a certain extent, because of various reasons too complicated to go into. We didn't get a Gaunt novel last year, so lots of uh, Black Library writers got together and wrote stories that were set in the Sabbat World's Crusade that, that Gaunt, is, the Gaunt stories are set in. Uh, I'd love to do this. I think Black Library's keen to do this as well. I think we're just a matter of getting people together to do another one. Uh, Zalax's earlier question um, about uh, focusing on, on chaos and occupied worlds, which she, she asked a, a while ago, um, uh, obviously relates particularly to the story that Nick wrote for for the Sabbath Wells book, the Sail short story about, about uh, the Resistance War. Uh, and that is a theme that both she and I are very interested in developing. As Alex also asked, what does a Tanith dress uniform look like? Well, it looks like the Tanith uniform, but it's a dress. Uh, it's uh, smart. I imagine there's. Uh, I imagine it's still black with, uh, you know, sort of. It's got, you know, piping and and stuff, but camouflaged. Um, I don't know, actually. See, people like you ask me a question like that, and now I realise I've got to go away and spend a day working out what that looks like because some I need to know for a new. I could blithely put them in dress. So they're all in dress uniform, and then I realised I've only got a mental impression and I haven't worked out what. Um, I think one of the answers to that question, however, though, is that there are multiple dress uniforms in, in the Tanith Regiment now, of course, because the, the, um, I think the ceremonial costumes of the, uh, uh, the Belladon troops, for instance, are going to be quite different to the ceremonial costumes of the, uh, the Vergastite and Tanith troopers. And uh, particularly now they've got, a, uh, uh, they've got more pomp and circumstance, as you will find out. People who haven't read Salvation's Reach, the new Gaunt book, there, there, is, there, is a, there is a whole strand of that which I think is set to develop. I just... Jonathan also asks, will the Sons of Sek make a re reappearance? Definitely, absolutely definitely. Sons of Sek are as, now as, as crucial to the Gaunt books as the Blood Pact is. 
Jonathan also asks, other than the Tanith and the Fantine, any other regiments of the Sabbat Crusade you feel like playing with? Um, I keep going back to, I keep thinking about going back to the army units that we saw in, um, uh, um, well, both in Necropolis actually and in, uh, in Honor Guard. I know we've revisited Honor Guard. Uh, and I'd like to write some more about the uh, Titan Legion, and as I mentioned in, in Zalex's question earlier, I'd like to do some, uh, some Imperial Navy things. I've also got a great idea, I think it's a great idea for an Imperial Guard novel, but I can't, it can't be a Gaunt novel because it won't fit in with their continuity, it has to be about. So I might have to just branch out and do another Imperial Guard unit. Alex also asks, uh, in the wake of, well, spoiler alert, okay, in the wake of what happened to a certain character in the fourth book of Gaunt's Ghosts and the reaction to it, have you ever considered ending the series by killing all of the ghosts? <laughs> um, yes. That would be the inevitable ending. Uh, uh, I suppose what you're talking about there is a book in which they all just die at the end, whereas I was imagining that I'd stop writing the Gaunt books when I finally ran out of ghosts. So it would be a more a case of attrition. Uh, I don't know how, but I, I think that would be... I think that's beca because it's such a bleak thing, that they're soldiers who will eventually keep fighting until they're killed, that that would be a sort of slightly obvious thing to do, uh, really. Uh, I think... When, when the ending of the Gaunt series finally comes, I will work hard to th come up with the most satisfying and interesting ending. Now, if that is killing all the ghosts, maybe. Uh, or, I don't know. Uh, but yes, I thought about it. Dean Sherman asks two questions. Uh, firstly, will we see any more of General Grismond and the rest of the Armenian First Armoured? I mentioned them just now. I'd love to go back and write, uh, uh, write some more tank stuff. The Armenians and also the Pardus in uh, um, Honor Guard. Maybe there could be a big tank action novel that features both regiments. That would be good fun, wouldn't it? Uh, his second question, Dean's second question is, will we see more of Gaunt before he became a commander of the Tanith? I'd love to do that as well. That's, 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 a, that's a back burner project which I hope to get to at some point. We, we were jokingly referred to it as Lil Gaunt uh, when he was a cadet. But I see there being one, two or even three novels that could, could be written about his time as a commissariat cadet that could fit into the beginning of the, the sequence. Uh, Alison Smulders, hello Alison, who was the Commissar at San Diego. I remember you. What percentage of the named red shirts that get killed off in Gaunt's Ghosts are named after fans? Quite a lot these days, uh, quite a lot. Uh, people can submit their names to me and uh, it, I, can, I don't promise when and where or how they will get killed off, but if they want to be cannon fodder in a book, uh, quite a lot of them are. Uh, and I've had an awful, it's a, it actually amazes me the number of people who want that to happen to them. So I've got a big list that I work through. Sometimes people come up and they, their names are simply so good that they end up becoming major characters. And rather than being red shirts, they end up becoming major characters. Uh, in fact, I think there's, uh, I think there's at least one in, uh, one or two in Salvation's Reach, the new Gaunt book, who, um, uh, who were people who came up and volunteered their names for, for humane destruction uh, and they were just too good to, uh, to ignore. Yes, it's up to me. I'm, if I'm in mid-flow and I suddenly think of a name, that's what goes in. But I do, I do go back to that list. So we will. Uh, so if you've given me your name over the years, sooner or later I hope to, uh, to feature you in a book somewhere. Sean Jackson, hello Sean, asks uh, a, a whole bunch of questions. I'll, I'll, I'll pick my favourites here. Um, uh, he says, where the hell is Milo? Will we see him again and the Saint when we see them again? Yes, you will. I never knowingly write a character out of the Gaunt's Ghost series without having some plan to bring them back in again. It might not be immediately yet, but, but hold on, it's not going to be far away. Uh, he also asks, Johnny asks, when will Bryn Milo make his return? The answer is soon. Maybe not today, maybe not tomorrow, but soon and for the rest of his life. Uh, Anya McGlinchey asks, are you going to do a book or short story about Milo's adventures with the Saint away from the ghosts? Oh, I hadn't thought of that. I might have to now. Now? Oh dear, that's another one for the list. I might have to now. Okay, good, good idea. It's probably worth pointing out that uh, you can uh, friend me on Facebook if you wanted to at Dan Abnett Primary Clone. Uh, it, that is actually my second page because I do. You will easily find a page called Dan. Abbott. In fact, you'll find lots of pages on there. But there is there is clearly one that's Dan Abbott. That's me, um, and it's full. It's absolutely full. You can try friending me there, but you're, you're probably not going to get because the the, the uh, a space. The, every now and then, a space does open up, and it tends to get filled 
sort of automatically because there are people who who ask to friend me who who I can't message to tell me to go somewhere else. But anyway, the point is, if you want to friend me on Facebook, go to Dan Abbott Primary Clone, which is the, which is a duplicate. I didn't want to open a fan page because I think that's a very strange thing to do, and I, and, and I like the fact that there is a direct point of contact. So opening a second page is nice. Uh, everything I post on one page, I post on the other. Come along, talk, join the fun. It'd be great fun. Uh, you can follow me on Twitter at uh, at Dan Abbott Club. That's all one word, Dan Abbott Club. Uh, or for a more casual approach, you can follow me and Nick on Twitter at Vincent Abnett, all one word. And my blog is at danabnett.com, which I'm sure many of you who've asked me questions already know. Uh, and in fact, if you're looking at this on my blog, you already knew it before anyway. Um, thank you for all the questions. I look forward to, uh, to talking to you again.